Sean Haney here with realagriculture.com and we're on site here at FarmTech in Edmonton, Alberta. And right now we're joined by one of this year's event's keynote speakers and a really good friend of Real Agriculture. I'll call her that. She may not, I think she agrees. Uh, Robin Anderson from Merging Ag. Robin, how's it going? Fantastic shot. I definitely consider you a friend. Oh, thank you. And also recent inductee into the Canadian Agricultural Hall of Fame. I'm really, really old. <laughs> How was that? It was an absolutely lovely evening. The Agricultural Hall of Fame did a great job putting the night together. Brenda Trask is just an events whirlwind mm -hmm. and uh, it was so thrilling to be there with Patty and Jean. What a lovely, lovely night. Pretty cool. So th three women inducted at the same time. Indeed. Yeah, very fantastic. So what was your biggest takeaway from that event? Um, well, first of all, that it, our time has come as women. Here there were three women getting inducted and that we are um, really small representations of the total contribution of women to agriculture. So I hope that many more women will be following um, in our footsteps and uh, joining the hall where they are so richly deserved to be recognized. Yeah. And on a very personal note, somebody observed to me that is extremely rare for someone to be young enough, uh, because I was the youngest inductee, to have their parent there for That's their induction. Cool. And so it was a really, really thrilling no night with my dad. Well, once again, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so you just got off the stage. You. Uh, Full house. That's pretty awesome. It, it, it's uh, when you're speaking to that many people, it can be uh, a little bit intimidating. What was some of your What was some of your message to the to the crowd today? Well, I, I think what I feel so acutely as I travel the world is this criticism of agriculture and having grown up in agriculture and knowing how hard we work, how difficult it is to produce a crop, how big the risks are. I've always been quite confounded by that. You know, they really need us for food. They need us for land stewardship. Um, we have a total number of hungry growing larger in the world. So why are we being targeted? So I spend a bit of time talking about that and then a bit of a path forward that I see me cut through some of this discussion that I think gives us a chance to really show why, why Canadian farmers are doing such a good job. Okay, so what are some of those areas where they're doing a really good job? Well, right now the, the United Nations is agreeing a set of indicators, a set of measures about effectively what is sustainable agriculture. And they include economic and social goals, which Canada should be able to meet easily. Our farmers are living well above the poverty line. We, we don't have some of the core issues of rural poverty that occur in some other countries, though we certainly have some. But if we were to hone in on the environmental goals, they have four indicators. One is related to soil quality. One is related to total water use. Are we drawing down reserve water, groundwater supplies over five years? And are we leaving adequate water quality? As well as are we um, leaving adequate biodiversity? So soil health, water use, water quality, biodiversity. And we take a look at um, the various responses that Ag Canada is gaining on how we're doing on those things. And they've been measuring them over the arc of about 30 years. And there are areas where we have to improve, but there are a lot of areas where Canada is doing really well. So what does all that add up to? What does it actually mean? And it's a good story. And is that is that essentially what we're trying to go for here? Or are there actual quantifiable outcomes that we can use for our industry's benefit? Well, I think it's both, right? Because the quantifiable outcomes let us move from just saying, hey, we're doing a great job, or hey, we do conservation tillage, which means nothing to some of the critics who have never been on a farm right. and have no context, to say, here, 193 countries of the world have agreed global indicators. Their countries are going to report on them through their official statistical agencies. In Canada, that would be StatsCan. And we are going to measure. And I think Canada is going to show itself at the top of the pack or amongst the top of the pack. And that is going to really change the game. We're no longer just going to be talking about pretty pictures about our landscape, which we should always show off because our country is they beautiful. Are beautiful. Yep. <laughs> but we can add to that real quantifiable outcomes on a finite set of measures that we all understand. And I think the other power is if we're measuring them, we can get behind them at places like farm tech and say, okay, we're doing really well on soil organic matter, we're actually in the desirable zone, we're trending in the right direction, 
but we're not doing as well on biodiversity. It's trending upward, but it's still a measure where we only have sort of moderate levels of success. So what can we do about better improving our crop rotations and what can we do on nitrogen levels in the soil are going, there's more residual nitrogen so far, it's not showing up in the water quality, but just a good reminder that that for our stewardship program is really important. How is Canada doing in comparison to the United States? Well, that's a great example, a question because there isn't necessarily a head-to-head -head comparison and that's one of the powers of these international indicators that are being negotiated and piloted over the next two years is if they agree them, there will be um, consistent collection in all countries. So I think that we are actually probably doing, anecdotally, I believe we're doing better than the U.S. on several of these measures. Um, you know, there's some pretty clear issues with water use and drawdown on the Colorado River and the California basins related to it. Um, and I think that we don't have issues of that magnitude in Canada. So I'm optimistic that we're going to do well head to head with a lot of countries. Does this help us with things like international customers when it comes to trade, that Canada is able to tell a really good story about some of the things we are doing? Because we hear all the time that oh, people, people like uh, exports out of Canada because of some of this stuff. So do, does it really help in some of your international travels? Do you hear that from international people? Yeah, I really do think it will make a difference because people are being asked that question. In a sense, international travels, it's often easy to show the beautiful picture of Banff. Here's our, Banff. <laughs> here's our scenic beauty. Um, and that, as I said, should remain part of, part of the story because it's the physical evidence of the story we're telling. But to be able to add those kinds of rankings, to add in the details, and to have global consensus because their own governments will have agreed that these are the indicators means that we can talk to them saying, you've agreed this, but it's also really powerful down the value chain. And one of the things that we see is so many different sustainability platforms, initiatives. I think there's more than 400 certification programs that some of the big handling companies um, need to hit. It's just become a dog's breakfast. Yeah. And everybody has a different take on it. So if we get some international consensus that these are the four pillars and some agreement, I think it will also help cut through the clutter of the desire to not just meet international trade standards, but really to hone in on what consumers are asking for. Okay, so we're doing a good job. There's a lot of good things happening, and we should be celebrating those successes. There's probably room for improvement, too. You bet. So where are those areas where Canada really needs to do a better job? Well, you know, there is some great technology here at Farm Tech. We're on the trade show floor. The amazing technologies around precision agriculture Many farmers are touching upon them, they're getting the yield data off their computers and their um, combines, but they need to apply them more. And I think one of our, our key areas would be more precision agriculture. So we're watching those nitrogen levels carefully. And right now the proposal is it's just nitrogen being measured in the water, but Canada measures more components than that, right. also phosphorus. So we wanna keep an eye on those things. I think on the biodiversity, it's a good reminder that we shouldn't be pushing those rotations. Canola and canola and canola, you know, isn't preached by the Canola Growers Association, and it's really not um, the best outcome on biodiversity, and that becomes part of that story. Mm -hmm. So, one of the powerful things about this is it's great for farmers not to be applying more nitrogen than they need to because it's expensive. So it's a reduction of input costs. It's got a great outcome for the environment and crop rotations are the same. It's really good for our soil health, it's good for biodiversity, and it's great for protecting your farm from disease. Well, what's really interesting is that one of the things Western Canada does have is crop diversity, right? And that's, that's a, that plays huge into all of this. Uh, other places like Ontario or the Midwest in the I states don't have that same kind of crop diversity. I'm even hearing more and more discussion this year about intercropping which is like taking crop diversity to a whole other level inside the same growing season. So there's a lot of people really, really stretching their minds on how do we do this differently? For sure. And in fact, the, the charts that I put up nationally do show more pressure in Eastern Canada than in Western Canada, where um, on the, the charts prepared about the various environmental indicators, we saw a lot of um, green in the prairies that show we're doing really well. 
and um, some challenges as we move to that eastern area where there's a lot more urbanization, a lot of intensification that's challenging. But if you talk about intercropping, oddly, in a lot of my travels, I see intercropping because it's very manageable on a small-scale farmer level because you can put a totally different crop in your hand harvesting. So if you're right. harvesting those chilies in the middle of your um, maize crop or some other crop, you can do it at a very different time in a manageable way. It's a little harder with the scale that we're dealing with, but it's, there's a lot of power in looking at what biodiversity can give us for net benefits on pest reduction, um, diversity of pest pressures, and also even some early evidence of some yield boosts, right? Obviously intercropping with a pulse can give you a good nitrogen fix. In, in the export market, some of our biggest competitors are you know, Russia, Brazil, China. Where do they stack up here? Because we're doing a lot of stuff in Canada, but what are they doing, what are they doing in those BRIC countries? I think they really like that question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think the BRIC countries are walking the same progress that we did, and they, they are probably not being as proactive about measuring some of these outcomes as our government has been. So it's hard to compare that. But again, if we have these global indicators, they'll be in a position that they're meant to report as well. Anecdotally, I think we continue to hear about a fair amount of um, large-scale monocropping in some of those countries where they're producing large tracts of wheat, for instance, and maybe not as focused on the rotations as we are. But you, you take a look at Latin America, and 30 or 40 years ago, they weren't producing at the levels they were that we were, and they hopskit some of our worst experiments um, and went directly to the conservation tillage techniques and some of the things that we're doing that are really showing great benefits. And I think in the fullness of time, we'll see the BRICS and others also make that leap into some of the new solutions. We're, we're sort of, Canada's really taking a bit of a, a leadership position in this, for sure. We, our farmers are just awesome farmers, and I think this is going to show, in fact, we're probably some of the world's best. Okay, Robin, thank you very much for joining me here today at the Farm Tech. Thank you. <laughs>